Hello, hello all. In this particular tutorial, I'll explain. I'll try to cover Oracle Database Administration for beginners. This particular tutorial is for anyone and everyone who doesn't have any idea of how the Oracle works and you want to start your career with Oracle Database, but you don't know the right place, like you don't know where to start. I, I am trying to record this particular video for you to get started with Oracle Administration. Now, what is an Oracle Database? An Oracle Database is, is literally an RDBMS. RDBMS. It's a, one of the top RDBMS. It, it is from an Oracle Corporation. The company name is Oracle. It's, it's from Oracle Corporation. The current version which is available is Oracle 21C and 23C is going to get released. It's about to come uh, just maybe in few one or two months or maybe this month itself. I do not know exact date. Now the the current if the the current uh, the Oracle 21C is supported only up to 2024 and Oracle that is another version called Oracle 19C which is supported up to 2025. So if you are if you are on a previous version, let's say you are on a Oracle 12C, if you are on a then it makes sense to go to 19C rather than 21C because 21C support will end sooner than the 19c so if you if you want to upgrade go to 19c don't go to 21c skip 21c you might want to go to 23c if it is available but if you cannot wait for 23c go for 19c now what is this c c stands for cloud so c <coughs> c stands for cloud before 12c there was 11g which was the g stands for grid so it was a grid architecture and c for the cloud now this remember that this 12 is the number the major number and what happened is like oracle changed the way so from oracle 18c so from after 12c there is no 13c 14c 15c directly there is 18c and the reason for this 18c is based on the year so 18c came in 2018 19c came in 2019 21C came in 2021 and now 23C is going to come which is going to come in 2023. So this is the versioning of how the Oracle versioning works. Now the, 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 the most important part is Oracle can be installed on Solaris, it can be installed on Linux, it can be installed on Windows and most of the organization is, puts, installs it on Linux most of the organization installs it on linux you there are some organization which do run it in windows but linux is more recommended for oracle database now the to to work with oracle database to support oracle database you need to have basic knowledge of unix at least some basic knowledge of unix or linux you need to have basic knowledge what you need to know is like you know the basic command like cd how to change the directory how to create a directory how to uh, look at the files ls minus l how to op view the content of the file cat command so you need you don't have to be an expert in unix but you need to have a basic knowledge of unix for you to support oracle database now the 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 tool that we use the tool is called putty so the putty is used uh, this is the tool which is used to connect to the server here you will mention either the ip address or then you will mention the host name. There are other tools which you can use. You can use the uh, MOBA XTERM. You, you have, there is another tool from SolarWinds. So there are a couple of tools which are available to connect. One of the famous tool is PuTTY. Now, in since Windows 10, the SSH support is there from within the command prompt. So you, can, you don't have to have a PuTTY. You can directly launch command prompt. Uh, you know, you can just go to the command prompt, Windows command prompt. This is normal Windows command prompt and you can try to connect to the server. This is also possible. So, okay. Now, now that we have understood, you know, what we need, let's begin. So how to connect to the Oracle database? So first thing that you need is you need to, you need to be, you need to know 
where what is the host name where your server where is your where is your uh, where is your database running so let's open putty and my database is running on db1 so i'll the host name this is the host name so i'm connecting to the host name and i'll give root uh, sorry oracle as the user id if you don't have the oracle user id you might have your own user id so let's say the user id is dbp now this particular dbp will not be able to connect to the oracle database so what we will do we will say sudo su minus oracle so this once we are so basically the dbp has now switched to oracle user so once he has switched to oracle user how to find out how to find out what are the databases available on this particular machine so you know we we need to know what are the databases which are available on this particular machine so for that there is a file called etc or rtap there is a file called etc or rtap look at that particular file so what you will do you will say cat etc or rtap you will say this particular file look at this particular file this particular file will give you if you see here it gives two entries take the whatever is before this colon is the name of the sid sid stand for oracle system identifier so sid which is also called as oracle sid oracle sid which is nothing but oracle system identifier okay that's what it is called and that is nothing but the instance name it basically sid corresponds to the instance name okay so in oracle there is a concept called instance name and there is a concept called database name they don't have to be they don't have to be same you can have you know you can have an instance name uh, called um, king and you can have the database name uh, called queen so you can you can have like this but you know normally what we will do in a in a single instance which is not a rack and i, I don't want to talk about rack but if this is not a rack environment then normally what we will do is like instance name and the database name will be same normally we will keep it same okay in a very rare scenarios we will try to keep it different but it's always better to keep it same if it is a non rack environment now now this this instance name also corresponds to something called oracle sid so it corresponds to something called oracle sid now here i talked about a file called etc or a type i talked about a file called etc or a type this particular file is there on the unix server you you can use the cat command to look at what is there in that particular file and here you can see that there are two entries take a look at this name before the colon so there is a colon here and take a name so this aura is name of the database which is hosted on this aura 19c is another database which is hosted so there are two databases which are currently hosted okay they may be up they may not be up okay now the question is how do you find out if the database is up or down how do you find out if the database is up or down you can look at you can look at ps minus ef so ps minus ef is a command to look at the linux processes so this is the linux command this is not oracle command this one will give you list of all the processes which are running now what we will do we will say ps minus ef pipe this is the pipe symbol grep and we will look for a process called pmon and you can see there is a pmon process for aura 19c so there will be that means that aura 19c database is currently running now whether it is in the rewrite mode or whether it is just up you know pmon will be there even if the database is in the mount and i'll talk about i'll talk about what is a mount state but aura 19c look look at this moment looks like aura 19c database is up and running now i mentioned that there are two databases on the system so let me take a look at that cat file and i'll do the tail so that you know and you can see there are two so you can see that aura database is not running okay and aura 19c is right now running so th this so per database there will be a pmon process there will be a pmon process per database if the database is down this process will also go down now is this the only process no there are other processes so if i want to look at all the processes which are running for aura 19c i can do something like this instead of ps minus ef grep grep aura 19c and now you see i got this all of the processes pmon smon dbw0 log writer rico process so there are lot of the process so if the if there are some mandatory background processes 
which are important and then there are some non important processes so now if 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 this particular process goes down the then if the particular process is not running so if this particular process the pmon process is not running the oracle database will go down it will go down so now i have mentioned that there will be one pmon process per oracle database so if on my system there are two databases so you can say that one database is currently running the other database is not running so what i will do i will turn on the other database now how do you first thing that you need to know is how do you connect to oracle database to connect to the oracle database okay you will say sql plus as sysdba now when you do use this you are saying connect to oracle database using the sysdba privileges which is the highest privileges which is the highest privilege remember that this is the highest privilege so you are telling you are telling oracle or you are telling the database i want to connect as a that is there are another ways of connecting using lower privileges or as a normal user i'll talk about that at a later point in time but let's let's as most of the admins will connect as a sysdba so let's try this particular command but before running this particular command this is the oracle command before running this particular command what you need to do is you need to tell the oracle uh, this particular machine you need to tell the linux or you need to tell oracle which database we want to connect and you see we have two databases okay we have aura and we have aura 19c so if you want to connect to a database called aura how do you do that you will say dot aura space remember there is a space aura e and v what does this dot space aura e and v let me put this command here so what does this dot aura e and v says dot aura e and v says and remember there is a space i mentioned this before set the aura stands for oracle and env stands for environment so we are saying set the oracle environment okay so we are say, saying that set the oracle environment so let's let me set aura env then you have to enter the the sid the instance name so in my case it is aura and now if ignore this particular message and now if i try to connect uh, using sql plus as sys dba then you see it will say connected to idle instance what does this idle instance means that this particular instance is currently not running and that can be proved by the fact that even the pmon process is not there for or our database now i'll open another session okay so i'll open another session keep it here okay and in this particular session what i'll do is you know i will run this particular query take this query and put it here and you know so you can see that there is a pmon process for aura 90c now we are connected to a database called aura how do we connect to that particular database first we set the aura env environment we first set the aura env then we press the enter and we said okay we want to connect to the aura database now we will say startup we'll say startup startup is the command to start our database so startup is the command to start our database now the database is getting started i'll come to this particular screen and look at what are the pmon processes and you can see that now i got two pmon processes one for the aura database one for the aura 19c which means my probably both of my databases are currently up and running both of my databases are currently up and running now the now now if if what happens if this pmon process goes down okay so let me let me do something let me once this particular okay so now we are how to find out what is the first thing that you will do is like you will verify what is the database so there is a view called v dollar database there is a view called v dollar database so v dollar database is a view it's a dynamic view uh what they call it as you know dynamic view oracle call them as a dynamic view because the data is not constant it changes okay in this particular view it is not a constant data it will change based on the database state now what we will do is like you know how to find out what are the columns available in this particular view so you will say describe v dollar database you will say describe v dollar database so take this particular command and run here and this particular command shows that these are all the column names which are available in a view called v dollar database so now if i want to know what is the name of this particular database and what is the open mode of this database so what i'll say i'll write something like this 
so let me clear the screen so system clear is to clear the screen so uh, sorry uh, host clear is not system clear host clear and what i'll say i will say select a name comma open mode from v dollar database and now you can see the name of the the database is aura and it is currently in the read write mode now what i'll do is like i'll try to create a sample table so create table sample c1 int okay that's all good commit okay so now i created a sample table now what i'll do is i will kill this pmon process i will kill this particular pmon process okay so once if i kill that particular pmon process what will happen is the oracle database will go down so remember there is a relationship between the pmon process and the and the oracle database so let me kill this particular pmon process so how do i kill it i'll say sudo because only the root can kill it so sudo kill minus nine and i'll say one three four four seven that's done so now if i look at the pmon process there is no pmon process for aura database now i'll try to create or i'll try to select i'll try to create another table so let's say create table uh, sample two okay and see what happens okay will it get created and you can see connection lost contact why did this happen okay because the pmon process went down or we killed that particular process we killed that particular process which means that if the pmon process is not running your oracle database is probably not running so there is a one to one relationship between one to one relationship between a pmon process okay pmon process and oracle database remember there are other processes this pmon process are called background processes these are called background processes in the oracle uh, there are a couple of others such as pmon there is smon there is a uh, uh, rico there is uh, there is a uh, log writer lgwr then there is a db w029 basically 12 so db writer and a to j so there are there are a couple of other processes which are important processes for oracle any of this particular process is not running probably oracle will go down so now okay now that we understood that you know to how to find out if the oracle is running or not you can use pmon process now is the pmon process enough it's actually not enough the pmon process comes up even if the database is in the mount mode and what is the mount mode i'll come to that at a later point in time but think of that that your database may not be ready to do the read write and even that pmon so pmon is not the only only process so what we will do is like you know we will uh, we will go to this what is actually what we need to do is like we first you look take a look at the pmon so first thing that you take a look at the pmon next you connect to your database so connect to your database sql plus as sysdba and run a query on a v dollar database run a query on v dollar database and look for a column called open mode so select the so name what is the name of the database comma open mode from v dollar database if this particular column is read write then only it is all good your database is properly functioning okay so now we we know okay so let me revise something let me go back okay so there is a there is a view called v dollar database that is very important there is a column called open mode and the name so these are the columns and how did i look at how do we if i don't know what is the column how do you do that you will say describe v dollar database which will give you the all the columns which are part of that particular table so v dollar database is nothing but a, a table and in that particular table you have multiple columns and i was interested in a column called name and the open mode and the this is the most best way to find out if your database is running or if the open mode is read write then 99% your database is up there might be some ch ch chances where it is in the hung state it shows it is in a read state but users are not able to connect that is a another scenario but 99% of the time if it is in the read write mode then probably your database is up and running so let's go back and revise something so we learned we learned that you can have you can have multiple databases 
you can have multiple databases on one Linux server. So sometimes I will be using the word called host server and the host is exactly same. So I'll say sometimes on a host, host, when I say host, that is nothing but a Linux host. So Linux host or Linux server, that would be what I will be saying. Okay. Now the next thing is like how to find out what are the databases which are on your system. You will look at cat etc or our tab. You will look at cat etc or our tab. The etc or our tab will list all the databases which are which are probably list all the databases which are created. Now, if for some reason that is not an entry in the etc or our tab, create one. You can manually create it. It's not like you know manually create that entry and I'll show you how to create that entry at a later point in time, but you can manually create that entry. Okay, if somehow somebody deleted that entry, it's go ahead and just edit that particular file. Okay, it's a normal text file. You can edit that particular text file. Okay, so now, now once we know, okay, then you choose, you choose which database you want to connect and you will say dot, you will say dot aura env, you will say dot aura env and then you will give the name of the database. So if I wanted to connect to aura 19c, so let me open a session. And if I wanted to connect to a database called Aura 19C, so let me minimize all of this so that everything looks good. So if I wanted to connect to a database called Aura 19C, so I will say Aura ENV, which is nothing but Oracle Environment, and give the SID, which is nothing but Aura 19C. And then if I say SQL plus adds sysdba, so SQL plus adds sysdba will make a connection to the Oracle database. I, I'm saying that give, make a connection to this particular database using the sysdba. And then if I want to run a command, select name, comma, open mode from V dollar database, it will show that I'm connected to a database called Aura 19C, which is, which is nothing but the SID and the database is currently in the read write mode. Now, we also learned how to start the database. To start the database, the command is startup. Now, I did not talk about how to shut the shut down the database the the command to shut down the database is shut immediate and there are other options for shut immediate like shut normal shut transactional shut about etc etc i would not cover all of those options because i i just want you to start my 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 main aim of this particular tutorial is do not i do not want to give you all of the information i want you to start the basics so at least how to connect to an oracle database how to you know find out what databases are there how to find if the database is open if it is up and running all of that things i'm trying to cover then there are there are things that you can do there are multiple options i will not cover all of that this is this is this is a tutorial which has been designed i'm i'm i am not i, I have not even prepared a document here i'm 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 talking and I'm, I'm thinking what I should explain. I'm thinking and I'm explaining you. And I'm, I'm thinking that you have no idea of how the Oracle works. So the startup command is the command which is to start the Oracle database. Shut the immediate is the database, uh, command to sh shut down the database. Now, if I run a startup command on a database which is already running, it is going to fail. It, basically, it's not going to do anything. It will say, database is already running so you want to you want to start that this particular database which is already started okay how can you start a car which is already st started you cannot start it right if you want to start a car which is already started you need to first shut down that car you need to stop that car and then you only you, st you can start it so that is exactly what it is saying so how to short stop the database to stop the database you will say shut immediate now remember when i run this particular command when i run this particular command what will happen this aura 19c process will go down so let me clear the screen and this you can see that aura 19c process is currently running okay now i'm going to shut my database okay so i'll keep it here okay and i'll keep it okay so let me close this and i'm going to keep it i'm going to say shut immediate and what i'll do is i have initiated the shut immediate give a few seconds because what it's going to do is it's going to dismount the database and then only it's going to see database close dismount and then it's going to shut down and what is what it it does in the background i'll come to that but think that it is going to first close the database dismount it and then if i now look at the 
in PMON process, you can see the PMON process for Aura 19C database is gone. Okay. If and there will be no Aura 19C processes because all of those processes are literally gone. Now this is the static registration. Don't bother about this. But this is the static registration. Okay. So now that we have understood how to start, so to start the database, it is a startup database. To shut the database, it is shut immediate. To connect to the database, you will say SQL plus as a sysdba and re now remember one thing see i sql plus as sysdba what if you set up an environment to a database which is not there so if i say aura env and i put a database called let's say no db okay so there is no database see here it prompts me for the oracle home and i'll just say enter and now if i run the same command sql plus as sysdba this is not going to work this is not going to work because it's going to tell us it is going to say that I cannot find SQL plus. So remember, you need to set your Oracle environment correctly. So you can see SQL plus command not found. Now I'll show you what exactly happens in the background. So when you set your Oracle environment, what it actually does, it, it sets you three things. It sets an Oracle SID, it sets the Oracle home and it sets the Oracle base. So these are the three things that it will set. So let me let me put it here. Let me let me repeat all of that. So when you run an Oracle ENV, what it does, it like it sets it sets Oracle SID, which is nothing but the value that you entered. It sets the Oracle home and it sets the Oracle base. Now what are we are going to do? What we are going to do is we are going to echo okay dollar dollar means give me the value of this this is the variable and give me the value of this so i'm going to do that echo dollar echo dollar echo dollar okay so now i'm going to set here i'm clear the screen and i'll set here this particular environment to an aura 19c sid and give me the values okay I'm, i don't have to do that and give me these three values okay give me three these three values and you can see oracle sid is set to aura 19c Oracle home is set to this particular directory and Oracle base is set to this particular directory. Now what I'll do, I'll go here and I'll set this Aura ENV to no DB. Okay, so that is no database. I do not know. So now if I run this particular command, if I take this, you will see that it is not correct. These are This is not correct. It is not setting it correctly. So basically when you do aura env you are saying set the oracle environment it is very important that you understand this okay and you understand the oracle home oracle base so oracle what is oracle sid i talked about it it is a system identifier nothing but the instance name system identifier or nothing but the instance name oracle home is the location where oracle's binaries okay binaries or oracle application or oracle software you call whatever you want to call it application or oracle software that is where it is installed oracle home is nothing but the location of your oracle database and what is oracle base it is the the the, the trace file the admin file so all of the other log files that gets created that's the location of your oracle base okay so oracle base is for the trace file log file admin files audit files oracle home is the location of your oracle software oracle sid is your system identifier i hope you are getting something okay i'm trying to make it simple okay but i do not know whether you are okay and we also learned the concept that there will be a pmon process there will be a pmon process per database if the database is running there will be a PMON process. Now, how do I find out? PS minus EF grep PMON. And you can see there is no Aura 19C. Now, let me let me start this particular database. So, I'll say, I'll go as SQL plus SSDBA. And I will say startup. I'll say startup. Okay. And once I start this particular database, the Aura 19C process will come. The PMON process for Aura 19C will come. If I start another database, the PMON process for that particular database will come. And if somebody kills this particular process, then Oracle will go down. The instance will go down. So do not kill the PMON process unless Oracle is hung or you cannot shut the instance using the shut immediate. 
So sometimes what happens is like shut immediate doesn't work. So you will try to run another command called shut abort. So that is actually a last resort. You know, if nothing works, you should use this particular. So shut abort last resort. Okay, if nothing works, try to use shut abort. But if the shut abort is also not working, then you can directly go and the kill the pmon process, which is nothing but shut down the Oracle instance. Okay, so now once the Oracle instance is running, you will verify if everything is okay. You will say select the name, name to look for what is the name of the database, open mode from V dollar database. And if it is in the read write state, probably your database is currently running. All good. Now that we have identified how to start and start shop the database, how where are the database names stored, what is the PMON process, we have we have learned everything. Let's dive into the next part, which is basically how to connect to this particular database from a remote session. Okay, so you, you want to connect to so before connecting to the remote session, let's think of let's try to create a user. So I'm going to create a user. So how do I create a user? Create user them and identified by password so give some password try to give a complicated password don't give a simple password i'll say password okay so this this is a literally or i'll say pass one two three four so this is the password of sam okay so i created a user so the command would be i'll put this command so the command would be create user okay whatever username you want to create so i created a user called sam identified by and this is the password of that particular user. So you are creating a new user called Sam. Okay, all good. Now what we will be doing is like we will try to connect to this particular user. We'll try to connect to Oracle database using this user called Sam. Okay, so for that, for that we we what we'll do is like you know if you want to connect here. So till now I was using the sysdb, but if you wanted to you if you want to connect on your normal screen on your this one using this one so how the same user will connect how same user will connect so let me clear all this and you know what he will it will he will say he will say sql plus okay same okay so now he is it's asking for the password so give the password which is pass one two three four give the password and you can see here user sam lacks create session privileges log on denied which means that you just if you just create a user and if you don't give him the create session he is not going to he's not he's not able he will not be able to log into the database okay so sam cannot log in now what i can do you know and this is not a good practice don't do this what i can do is instead of i can say sam slash pass one two three four okay so what i'm saying here connect to the database with the sam and with the user id called pass one two three four now before doing this remember that you need to set your oracle environment to tell oracle which environment so you know you have to set your oracle environment and then you have to run this particular command so now see here sam cannot so i'm what i'm going to do i'm going to take this create session i'm going to take this create session go to the session okay the main session the sys dba session and i'll say grant 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 create session to same it's very simple i'll put this command on a notepad in a big window so once the user is created the next thing that we will do is we'll say grant create session to same so sam is the user that we created and we are going to grant him okay so let's do that so let's and grant succeeded okay that's that looks good now go back here okay control c and this time now if i run the same command sql plus sam pass one two three four if I run this particular command, Sam, okay, this particular command, this time I should be able to connect to the database. And you can see I am connected to the database using the Sam, using the password of Sam. Now, this is again, this is not a good way because you know everybody who is okay, somebody who is looking at your screen can easily identify what is the password of Sam. So it, really you should not be doing this. What you should be doing is you know you should be actually saying SQL plus Sam and then it will prompt for the password and you have to enter the password. And this time, whatever password you entered, you, you nobody can see that. So that's that's how you will connect. Okay. So now that we have connected to the same data, this one. So what we will do is like we will we will this is all local okay this is all local think of that is a 
there is an application called SQL Developer. It's a it's a free tool from Oracle itself. SQL Developer is a free tool. Okay, it gives you a GUI kind of thing. It's a free tool from Oracle itself. So download that particular tool. So I've already downloaded that particular tool and open that particular tool. So let's open that particular tool. And you know that particular tool will give you. So let me let me launch that particular tool. It will give you a kind of GUI way. So but remember one thing to connect to your Oracle database from a remote server or application server or from the SQL developer you need to have your listeners running okay so that comes the concept called a listener and okay and that is a concept of a networking so you know say no to this this is the first time only so listen if the listener is not running if the listener is not running then remote connections will not work the local connections will work see here all the local connections are working but if the listener and i have not checked actually the listener is running or not but if the listener is not running then probably the local connections will only work the remote connection will not work so how do we connect to the database you will say plus here you will give a plus here and then you will give here you can give any name this is just a name reference name for you this is this is selling which database you want to connect so let's say i want to connect to a database called uh, give some name whatever it is you know uh, rock i want to connect actually a database called rock but this is just a name so who is the user user is sam where what is the password of sam pass one two three four what is the host name he wants to connect he wants to connect to the host name db1 you can enter the ip also which is 192 in my case it is 192 or 168.1.101 what is this ip this is the ip of the database server so this particular server so let me exit and if i show you i have config is the command to find what is the ip i have configure and if i say great inet you can see the ip is 192.168.1.101 which i can enter here and the port that i know is 1519 that is a port and i'll come to that and sid is a system identifier which is nothing but aura 19c and let's test it and if it goes fine you can see it is success now remember what is this particular port this is a listener port this is a listener port where is that listener running that particular listener is running on the database server itself what if that particular listener is not running a new connection cannot be made existing connection nothing will happen nothing will happen to the existing this is slightly a tricky concept slightly a tricky concept nothing will happen to existing connections only the new connections will not work okay so now what are we are going to do how to actually look at if the listener is running or not okay the command for that is lsnr ctl so lsnr ctl status status and name sorry sorry about that status and name of the listener so this is nothing but a listener name okay so you need to know the listener name how do you find now the question is how do you find the listener name okay how do you find the listener name so there will be a directory there will be a directory in the in the server in the server that particular directory will be under the oracle home under the oracle home under Oracle home, there will be a network folder. There will be a directory called network under network admin and under that admin folder, there will be a file called listener dot aura and it will show you. It will show you all the listeners which are created. You can create as many as listeners you want. You can create a listener. Let's say you have 10 databases. You can have 10 listeners, one listener per database or you can have one listener listening to every database okay based on your organization standards and best practices you need to create a listener if it is a rack environment again i don't want to talk about rack environment but it's there are three scan listeners but if it is a standalone probably it's, it's good to create one listener per database okay so now that we have we have, we have understood where is this particular file oracle home network admin and the file name is listener.aura. The file name is listener.aura. So let's go to that particular file. Okay. Let's go to that particular file. So I'm going to do, I'm going to go to that. Let me clear the screen. Let me minimize all of this kachara. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to minimize this and I'll 
I'll, I'll, I'll go to that location. So CD, CD is to change directory. Oracle home, under Oracle home, there will be a network. And under network, there will be an admin. And what is this Oracle home? It gets sets automatically whenever we do the aura env i talked about it remember i talked about it oracle home gets set automatically whenever you set the oracle environment so when you go to this particular location when you go to this particular location look for a file called listener dot aura and you see there is a file called listener it's a text file it's a normal dot aura stands for oracle configuration files but it's a text file so how do you look at text file you will say cat uh, command and you will open and the another option is the vi you can use the vi but when when you will use the vi you you will use the vi when you want to edit the file normally you will open the file in the vi only when you want to edit if you don't want to edit the file then probably you will use the cat uh, more command there are other commands okay so now there is a listener called you can see there is a listener called lsnr v19 there is a listener called lsnr v19 and that particular listener is running on a port 1519 and that is the reason why i gave this particular port in the sql developer so when i made a connection so remember i made a connection to the uh, this particular database and i when i did this you can see i gave a listener called 1519 why did i give this 1519 because i have a listener called and the listener name remember it is a lsnr v19 okay so that's the listener name now what we what i will do okay so i will stop that particular listener so before stopping Okay, before stopping, let me disconnect from this particular session connection and let me try to connect. Okay, and give the password of Sam. Okay, and we are able to connect. Okay, so okay, so I gave the wrong password. Sorry about that. So it was I gave password as password, but it is pass one two three four. And you can see we got connected. Okay, we got connected to the database using the Sam user. All good, all good. Now what we are going to do? I'm going to stop the listener. Okay, stop the listener. And the command for that, as I mentioned, status is to see the status of the listener. If you want to stop the listener, you will say LSNR CTL stop. You will say stop listener and you have to give the listener name. And if you want to start the listener, you will say LSNR CTL start the listener name. Now, I'll come to th there will be a default listener and all this stuff. I'll come to that particular topic in a minute. But you can see that you know lsnr ctl start listener name so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop this particular listener okay so once if i stop this particular listener nothing will happen to this connection this connection will stay as it is okay nothing will happen to this connection but a new connection will not be able to made okay so what i'll do i'm going to stop that particular listener so i'm going to stop that particular listener so sorry the listener name i need to change it to lsnr lsnr v19 and remember uppercase lowercase doesn't matter here the actual name of the listener if you see it was lsnr v19 in the caps i'll show you that so the name of the listener was lsnr v19 in the caps but when i stopped it i gave the small case uh, where is it yeah, lsnr v19 the uppercase and lowercase doesn't matter so you can stop okay it doesn't matter so now i have stopped the listener let me disconnect otherwise what i'll do i'll open one more session so let's open one more sql developer okay i'm going to open one more sql developer so let it launch okay and i'll try to connect to the the same database using the same user and you will see i am not able to connect okay so I, you will see that i'm not able to connect so now i'll say rock and i'll say connect it's prompting for the password give some password okay and you will get a network adapter you will get a network adapter error network adapter could not establish the connection why is that because we stop the listener we stop the listener so if the listener is not running a remote connection to the database cannot be made it's very simple so now there is a second thing if somebody tells you please check if my database is running first thing that you will do is you will check the pmount process if somebody says i have issue connecting to the database I have an issue connecting to my database. Please, can you check? So what, what are the things that you are going to do? What are the things that you are going to do is you are going to check the PMON process. The first thing that you will do is you will check the PMON process. If the PMON process is there, then probably you will run a query. You will connect to the database. You will run a query on $3 database and look for the 
open mode okay if both is running then from the database angle you are good now go to the network part okay go to the network part and look find out if the listener is running if the listener is running if the listener is not running the remote connection will not work the remote connection will not work very important understand that okay so now what i'm going to do i'll try to reconnect you see that my connection is not working i'll give the password it is giving the connect error it's giving the network connection error and the reason for that is you can see on the screen we got an error now what i'm going to do i'm going to go back okay i'm going to go back let me clear the screen and run a command called instead of stop i'll say status and this one it will show that connection refuse connection if on listener tns no listener which means the listener is tns no listener which means the listener is not running now what i'll do i will run a command called start okay so i'll run a command called start and then once it is started so now it is started now if i clear my screen and run the status command you will see that instead of no listener i'm getting it is started the start date is this and the listener is up for seven seconds because we just started it now go back to the sql developer go back to the sql developer and try to connect to the database and this time this time we will be able to connect okay so we will you can see we got connected we are not no longer getting that particular error now so we learned how to how to how to start and stop the listener the command was lsnr status to look at the status of the listener stop to stop the listener start to start the listener we also identified that the listener configuration is stored in a file called listener.aura so there will be a file called listener.aura and that particular file will is present in oracle home network admin oracle home network admin that's where that particular file is present okay you if you create a new listener it will get created into that particular machine it will get created into that particular file okay so now give, give me a minute i'll show you how to create a new listener so what we are going to do now is i'll show you how to create a listener so if you want to create a listener okay you can you can you can actually edit that particular file okay you can literally go and edit that particular file okay so what is that file i told you where it is it is in the oracle home so let me go to that location cd dollar oracle home slash network slash admin and okay so uh and the reason why okay so admin admin spelling mistake so pwd so that's the oracle home and under this there will be a file called listener dot aura so if you if you if you want to create a listener you can just directly edit it but probably you might make a mistake okay so oracle gives you an utility called net ca to create a new listener okay so net ca is the utility to create a new listener so how do you use that so you will say net ca so you will type net ca so it's not allowing me to type okay let me type it here so c okay i think i lost my connection for some reason which happens sometimes so i'm going to launch one more okay so give it a minute sometimes my connection gets resetted so. now what we'll do is like we'll try to create a listener so before creating a listener let's take a look at what are the listeners in our file so we got a listener called sr v19 then there is another listener called just a listener so there are two listeners on this machine you can see there are two listeners one is this what is what is the this and one is this so there are two so let's try to create a new listener to create a new listener again you can manually edit that particular file but you might do the mistake so oracle gives you an utility and that utility is called net ca what is the net ca network configuration assistant net stands for network c for configuration a for assistant type that enter that particular utility and you should be able to see something like this so now we'll try to create a listener so you know what you want to do let's say you want to add a new listener and you can give the listener name now this is not going to work why this particular you know if i say next it's, it's going to fail do you know why because as i mentioned 
there is already a listener which is available on that particular machine called listener you can see there is a listener which is already available so it's not you cannot create a, another listener with the same name so you can say a listener with this name already exists okay so please enter a different listener name so that doesn't work okay so now what i'll do i will say bob okay so i'm trying to create a listener called bob okay bobby or bob okay let's say next tcp you can choose what protocol you want tcp ipc etc let's say tcp and use the standard port so the default port is 1521 now this is also not going to work you know why 1521 because sorry okay 1521 is going to work and that's a default port so now the question is if somebody asks you what is the oracle default port the default port is 1521 remember the oracle default port is 1521 so you can you can you know you can also go to the google and you can say oracle database default listener port okay and you should get the listener port you should get the value which is nothing but 1521 one okay so 1521 is the default oracle port okay so now okay so 1521 is going to work okay but if i say use another port and if i say 1512 it's not going to work you know why it's not going to work okay so it actually should have not worked so let's try 1519 and it's not going to work because you see this particular port is currently in use okay so there is a listener which is running with this particular port and oracle can find out oracle can find out that that particular so how do you find out that one so if i if i launch another session and if i say lsnr ctl status of the listener lsnr v19 if i do this v19 you can see that that particular port is 1519 so that particular port is currently running so oracle knows it is running so it cannot create it says use another port okay so you have to create use another port so let's say 1518 and this time is going to work so we are creating a listener called bob the name of the listener called bob and that listener we are saying create it with the port number 1518 so i'll say next finish okay listener configuration complete now i'll close this and i'll go to that particular file i'll close this i'll go to that particular file clear vi listener and you should be able to see that we have now a new listener called bob okay you have a new listener called bob this is the name of the listener and it is it is at the port 1518 okay now if you want to start and stop this particular listener port uh, po listener called bob you will say lsnr ctl start bob so let's go there okay and let me start okay so let's before starting let's take a look at what is the status of bob listener so i'll say lsnr ctl status of bob and you can see it is right now running and why it is running because when oracle database created the listener at the end it actually started it it's not only created it it also started that particular listener so that is why it's currently that particular now how do we stop that particular listener i will say stop bob okay so that's done now if i say status okay this time i will say no listener because that particular so lsnr ctl status name of the listener says that currently no listener now what we are going to do is we are if all of this is with a non-default so if you are using the default so by default the name of the listener is listener and if you are using the default listener then you don't have to give the name of the listener in the in the command so if you are just say lsnr ctl start which listener is going to start is going to start a listener with a name called listener that that is a that is there is a listener in the our file there is a listener called listener and it's going to start it which is running on port 1512 so you can see it's worked why did this particular command so did i specify the name of the listener here did i specify the name of the listener here you can see i did not specify the name of this and if you want to take a look at that you can see now if i by mistake if i delete that particular default listener so let me rename that particular default listener to something else okay and then that particular command so before doing that let me stop that particular listener so let me stop that stop and then what i'll do i'll rename that particular listener so i'll say listener one okay i'm renaming it and then if i now go back and try to start the default listener okay so okay see it automatically starts it so it knows okay and what it did you know what it did 
it created that particular list now on one five two one see now if i go back okay if i go back okay then here there is no entry okay but there is a listener which is dead on my system which is which is which is the default listener which is at 1521 so by default okay so my listener was at 15 it's it's a bit complicated so remember there is a listener okay there is a port associated with that particular listener if that particular listener is not running you will not be able to make a remote connection to create a listener you will use a net ca command net CA command to create the listener and if you want to start the listener you will say lsnr ctl start if you want to stop the listener you will say lsnr stop and if you want to look at the status of the listener you will say status okay if it is a default listener if it is a default listener which is which has the name of listener you don't have to when you use this particular command you don't have to give the you don't have to give the name of the listener if you just do lsnr ctl start is going to start the default listener with a default port if you give them if you give the name that means you are telling the oracle that start this particular listener you can have as many as listeners you want you want to create one listener per database that is fine if you want to have one listener for all your databases that is also fine it's your architectural choice okay the way if you have your fear there is a lot of traffic on the databases it's always better to create a separate listener for your database okay so you can have multiple listeners each for one database now one, another thing that i want would like to show you is you know you can also type okay you can also type lsnr ctl just do this and you can see now the command prompt change now if i say start okay li st stop listener then it's going to stop that default listener or if i can just say stop it's going to okay it's going to that you can see it stopped that 1521 listener if i say start it's going to start that 1521 default listener so you you can and if you want to start the bob listener you can you can say start bob okay and it's going to start the bob listener so the another way of doing this is you know if instead of typing lsnr ctl every time you can just type lsnr ctl it it will change this command prompt see here the command prompt change so any command that you run now you don't have to mention that lsnr ctl keyword and you can just say start stop etc etc okay so we understood we understood the concept of listener where is the listener running listener has to run on the database server okay listener has to run on the same server as the database that is the concept called remote listener i will not come into that concept but listener in your most of the cases listener has to be running on the same server as the database server and on that particular server there will be a file called listener.aura and where is that particular file that particular file is there in oracle home network under oracle home network under that it will be admin so if i take this particular path complete path so let me do like this let me do like this and if i take this complete path you will if i go there exit and if i go there sorry that admin did not get and uh, okay two cds okay and if i do ls minus l you can see there is a file called listener.or now let's go to a windows server okay so there is a there is a windows server let's go to the windows server okay and on that windows server let's go to that windows server and what we will do is this is a windows 2019 box this is a windows server as you can see i'll show it to you open uh this pc right click okay properties and i don't know why it is okay so give give me a minute let me re let me close this so the, I'll, i'm going to this particular windows box and if i do right click and if i show properties you can see it is a it is a windows 19 machine you can see it is a windows 19 machine and now if i it is a windows server 2019 and now if i what i'll do is like So I got this windows machine and what I'll do is turn on. 
So what I'll do is like I will try to connect from this remote box. So this is the Windows box. You can see it's a Windows Server 2019 box. And from this particular box, I will try to connect. To, as you can see it is Windows Server 2019 and I'll try to connect to the Oracle database. So here on the remote server, we need to configure a file called we need to configure a file called TNS names .ora. So that this is the the TNS names .ora file again in the same location. So Oracle home network admin TNS names .ora. So what is TNS names .ora? It is nothing but transport name file. Okay, so transport name file for Oracle. So in this particular file what it stores is like it stores which database you want to connect where where is it hosted so what is the host name what is the port that it is running etc so you will configure this particular file on a remote server okay so i got this windows 19 and from this windows 19 i will try to connect to a database on my linux server okay so what we will do is like here also go go to the location where oracle is installed Go to the network, go to the admin. Here there is a file called TNS name. Probably you will not be able to edit it directly. So copy that particular file on your desktop. So I copied it, open it in a notepad or any tool. So let's open that in a notepad. And here add an entry. So let's say I want to add an entry. So let me delete all of this. So what I'm saying here, and I can delete all of this. So let's take, I'll put it in the center. So what I'm saying is connect to a database called Aura 19C which is listening on server called db1 with a port of 1519 okay so i'm going to change this i'm going to create this okay and where i'm creating this on a client machine this file is called tnsnames.ora file and and i'm going to save this particular file and then i'll go to that location oracle home network admin okay and i'll replace that particular file and now i will open a command prompt or powershell whatever it is powershell let's say i want to open powershell and i want to now connect to the database i want to connect to the database and i want to connect using the user called oracle so i have already created a user called oracle i want to connect connect to this particular database so now let's run that particular query so I, how will i do that sql plus oracle and give the password of oracle user which is password and where you want to connect and this is the name from your tns names okay and that name can be anything okay so I'll, I'll do something i'll do one thing i will change that name so let me change that particular name to let's say um hero okay so i'm going to change this okay and i'm take this particular file i'll paste it here okay and i'll close the powershell relaunch the powershell so i'll do that so I'll open the PowerShell window on my Windows server. So this is the PowerShell window. And let me clear this so that you know you have. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to say SQL plus the name of the user who wants to connect, which is Oracle user, password of the Oracle user, add hero. Okay. And you can see now I'm connected to a database. Which database? I did not get connected to a database called hero. It's just the name. Okay. It's just the name that particular hero actually points to the the, S, the database with the service name called aura 19c which is hosted on db1 with a port of 1519 so now if i run this select a name from v dollar database okay so you can see it is actually aura 19c database and this particular database is hosted and i can show it to you so describe v dollar instance if i run this particular command you can see it is hosted on a host name called uh it is hosted on a host called db1 so we have and this particular machine so let me exit from the air cl and this particular machine the host name of this is win19 db1 so this is a win19 machine so this is win19 db1 and let me go back to this particular database and let's say select the where is this database hosted so select host name from v dollar instance so we have another view called v dollar instance and you can see it is hosted on a server called db1.db.com so this is the linux box and we made a connection from our windows box to a database which is hosted on linux from our windows to a database which is hosted and the way we did it is which 
we configured a listener. So by mistake, if I would have specified the wrong port, say let's say 1518 or 1525, which is not there, which is not listening. So now exit this and open another PowerShell and I'll take the same command, but this time it won't work because it will, there is no listener with that name or port which is listening. So you will see we are getting TNS no listener. So which means we made a mistake. So you need to be very careful in what here, what you specify. Or if I would have given a wrong service name, so if I would try to give, I'll give the correct port, which is 1519. Uh, so I'll take, I'll give the correct port. So let's save it, copy that particular file. And now I, what I will do, I will, I will try to connect. Okay. Okay. So here you see, we are getting a different message here. We got a message, no listener here. We are getting listener does not currently know of the service requested in the connect. So, which means, you know, which means that the, the, it went there first. Okay. When we gave the wrong port, it says there is no listener. Now we gave the correct port. Okay. We corrected the port, but we made one more mistake, the service name. So we need to give the correct service name or a, or a, 19c is the service name and how do i find out this particular service name i'll come to that so now i've corrected all of that so now let me clear this particular screen cls and if i now try to connect i am corrected okay so i'm not getting any warning so now the question that you will ask me how do i find out the service name so that is a concept called parameters so there are a lot of parameters one of the parameter is a uh, service name so let's take a look at Okay, let's take a look at the service name and you can see you have a, you can create multiple services. You can create more than one services. This has got a service name of Aura 19C. That's the one which we used to connect to our Oracle database. So we made a connection. Now, how do we see what are the connections? You know, if, how do we see? So let's do something. Okay, let me go back to the SQL developer and let me disconnect and let me make the, the connection to our database Aura 19C as Oracle user. So I'll say Oracle user and I'll give the password. Okay, I'll save it so I don't have to enter the password again and again. On which host DB1, on which port 1519. I can give the SID or I can give the service name. In my case, it is both the same. So I'll say test this, it works fine. I'll, I'll connect it and what I'll do is I will run, okay, it's too small, actually. Let's, uh, it's uh, too small. I'm, I'm going to sp spend some time. I'll pause the video and I'll make it big. Just give me a minute. Okay, I have made it big. So let me close this. And now what I'll do, I will run a query on a table called V$ session. And this particular table will tell me all the connections and there will be internal connections also. So you can see here, Okay, there is an important field called SID, serial number, OS user, and the host name. So you, it will tell you from which machine the connection is made. So let me take select, okay, SID, SID is the identifier, session identifier, serial number, then OS user, okay, let me not take OS user, from which machine, and the username, okay, from V$ session. I'm going to take this particular command. I'm going to run it. Now you can see that there is a connection, which is 136.59296, which is coming from this particular machine, win19 db1. Okay. So I want to now terminate this particular session. I want to terminate this particular session. Okay. So to terminate the session, you will say alter system. Okay. Alter system. Uh, just give me a minute. So you will say alter system kill session and then you will give SID comma serial name. Okay. Now before doing that, let me do something. Let me, let me post TLS. Okay. Let me create a table. So create table test C1 INT. So I'm going to create a table that got created. I'm going to insert a record, insert into test values. I'll insert a record with a value of 95 that got inserted. Now, if I run select, if I run commit, and if I say select star from test, I should be able to see one record, which is 95 because that's what we added. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to terminate this particular session. So alter system kill session. 
I'll say 136 comma 59296. Okay, 59296. I'm going to do that. So let's run that. System kill altered. Now I'll go back to that session and I'll run the select star once again. I'll run the select star query once again. And this time you see what happens. Your session has been killed. Okay, so an Oracle admin can terminate your session. Okay, to terminate your session, you need to find out the SID and serial number. Where you will find the SID and serial number, there is another view called V$ session. In that particular V$ session, you can find what is the SID, serial, which machine, what is the user. There are other details like when the connection came, etc, etc. So if you want to, if you just run, this particular query, you will get a lot of columns when the connection was established. What is the status of the connection? All of that details are there in this. So, you know, you can, what is the program name, etc. All of that is, all of that information is present in this particular V$ session. Okay. So now, you know, to kill the session, we need field called SID. We need a field called serial number. I found out. Okay. So now, you know, he, he that particular session is terminated. Now, now what we are going to do is we you remember we created a user called bob so let's connect using that particular user called oh sorry we did not create okay so now let's try using bob using sam sorry we'll try to create a table so let's say create table uh test sam is trying to create a table called test and this is not going to work because the sam does not have the create table authority you see here it says insufficient privileges so sam is not able to is Sam is not able to create any table in the test in any table in the database. He cannot create. Okay. So what we need to do as an admin, as an admin, we need to give him the privileges. Now I know the Oracle user is the admin user. Okay. So what Oracle user will do? He, okay. So what he will do? He will say grant create table to Sam. Okay. So we are going to grant create table to Sam. That done. Grant succeeded. Now let's here we got an error. Now he is going to run the same statement once again. And this time the table test got created. Okay. So now the table test got created. Now at a later, so what happens after one year? Sam decides, Sam decides to leave the organization. Okay. So he decides to leave the organization or he, he resigns from the organization. So you now have to drop the user called Sam. How to do that? Okay. So, you know, before dropping, okay, before dropping, let's take a look at where all the users are stored. Okay. So there is a table called DBA users. Look at that particular table. So select username from DBA users. And you know what? So this particular table will give you, I'm just giving this. So you can see that there is a user. Okay, so there is a mistake that I did. Select a table of view. Okay, so Sam cannot view. Okay, so Sam does not have the access. It's only the DBAs. Okay, so I made a mistake. Okay, so you can see that there is a user called Sam. Okay, so Sam user is there. Okay, so now what we are going to do? We are going to we are going to try to drop the user called Sam. Okay, so the thing that is it's it's not going to happen the same we cannot drop the same user drop user same why we will not be able to drop the user same because the same is currently connected so you cannot drop an user which is currently connected to the system so i'll say this and you can see uh, you cannot drop a user that is currently connected so we know that same is currently connected so that is the reason why we cannot we cannot drop the same user so what we will do, we will look for all the sessions, okay, with the username of Sam. So we'll say, okay, so where username is equal to Sam. So we are going to look at all the sessions from Sam user. So I'm going to run this particular query. And let's, it, it says that we got one session called 49275. Okay, so all good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill that particular session. So I'll take this particular value. And I'm going to kill that particular session. So let's take this particular value and I'm going to kill that particular session. So we are going to disconnect the same user. So that's done. Okay. System killed. Okay. Now what we are going to do, we are going to try to drop the same. So before dropping, let's see whether the same is there. So where username equals 
Then the same user is there in our system. You can see from the DBA user, there is a user called Sam. Now what we are going to do is we are going to drop the user Sam. Again, this is not going to work. Again, this is not going to work. Why is that? Is because Sam has got some tables in the in the environment. He has got some objects. Okay. So unless until there are objects in the in the database, you cannot drop the user. So let's do that. Let's try this. And you can see drop user Sam cascade must be specified. Why we have to specify the cascade option? Because there are objects. So there are two options. He can either drop all the objects so we can find out what are the objects which are holding by the same and we can then drop user same or we can say drop user same cascade and then when we do this particular thing the same user will be dropped. So now user same dropped because along with the and if I run this particular query okay along with this okay so you will see that the user same is gone and we dropped. So what happened? That particular table that he created, the table that he created here, the test table, also that particular table is also dropped. I'll prove it to you. So let me do something. Let me create the same user once again. Okay, so I'll create a same user. So create user Sam identified by, remember the syntax, name of the user identified by, give the password. So let's say pass1234, give the password for the same user. I'm going to do that. Then the user Sam created, you can see user Sam created. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, grant him the create session, grant create uh, session to Sam. And I, in fact, I will, what I'll do, you know, I'll give him the DBA role so that, you know, he can look at that particular table, grant DBA to Sam. So I'll not do all of that. So now, you know, I'm giving him the full permission. So now the Sam is going back. Okay. He's connecting again. So same. Okay. Sam connected. So who is, who is connected now? I can so show, I can say show user to see who is connected. So user is Oracle. That is okay. So user is Oracle actually. That is not good. So what I'll do is like, I'll connect using the Sam user. So using the Sam user. Oh, it's Oracle who created that table. Okay. So ignore about this. So think that the cascade option is going to drop. I'll, I'll come to this topic, but I, I wanted to show you something which I may, I, I forgot that it's not the Sam user who created the table. It was the Oracle user who created the table. So I, I can repeat this, but let's not repeat this. So I, I'll skip this particular topic. So the next topic. Okay. So now we, we, we learned how to create a user. So let's go back. Okay. So how to create a user, you'll say create user, username username just give me a minute so to create a user we'll say create user username whatever the username you want to give and identified by password this is the syntax for creating user there are other options like you can specify the table space default table space quota etc etc we will just stick with the simple simple because this is for the beginners okay now if you if you want to give the permissions such as create table we'll say grant uh, create session to the user let's say the user we created was sam and the password was pass one two three four whatever you want to give okay so grant create session to let's say sam now he will be able to connect to the database now if you want to create a table we'll say grant uh, create table to sam okay now if you if you want him okay so now we we get this so he will be able to create a table okay now tomorrow sam comes and says that you know i have forgotten the password i have forgotten the password of say i don't remember the password so as the oracle database admin you can change the user's password how do you do that instead of create here you will give the alter user and here you will say oh, give the new password okay so this will be new password so let's say new password i'll say new password so now let's do something let's go here and you can see the sam is able to connect to our database okay sam is able to connect to our database and what password he used he used the password pass1234 he used a password called pass1234 all good now what we are going to do is we are going to now we are going to 
change that particular password so let me exit okay and let me let me come here and we are going to change it to new password so let me go back okay and let's say alter user sam identified by new password execute this that's done the user sam altered so we change the password of the sam let's go back and try to connect using the same old password it won't work invalid username because we change the password so now what we'll do is like we will say we'll give the new password and the new password was new password so i'll give the new password and this time he was able to connect okay so we learned we also learned how to change the password so to change the password instead of using the create user you will just say alter user and you will give the new password now if you want to revoke the permission from the user so we said grant create table to sam to revoke that particular permission we will say revoke create table from instead of to we will say from okay so how do you revoke the permission you will say revoke create table from sam so this is how you will revoke the permissions from a user okay so to revoke the permission you will revoke so now let's uh, let's do something i i know that i gave the dba right to the sam okay and because of the dba right he was able to connect okay so now i'm going to do something i'm going to i'm going to revoke that dba right let's see what exactly happened so revoke dba from sam okay so let's execute that particular thing revoke succeeded now let me exit from this particular session clear the session and let's try to connect see here sam lacks create session because now see when we gave the dba dba is like a full permission so he got all the privileges like create session and all that stuff but we revoked that particular privilege and now he got he he's back to the square one so to revoke the privileges we will say revoke the privilege name whatever privilege from so to grant it we will say to grant to and to revoke it we will say revoke so we learned how to grant a privilege and how to revoke a privilege so grant and revoke okay when you do the grant you will say to when you revoke you will say from so we learned how to create the this one now what i'm going to do I'll, i i anyway i'm here so let me let me do something so like i'm going to grant him two two privileges so grant and we can combine okay we we don't have to create create table comma drop table so we will say create table slash drop table from uh to to sam so we are giving you know it's not like you know we have to say grant create table so we are giving two privileges in the same command line so we can do something like this also so let me do this okay so i'm going to run this together okay so okay so let's uh, I, I do not know okay so let's okay so that's fine okay so we created we granted a create table to sam and then what i'm going to do i'm also going to grant him create session to sam okay so we are granting him two sessions now we are going to go to the this particular user we'll create clear this and this time he is able to connect and let's create a table create table so he is creating a table with his name only sam okay c1 int okay and now okay now you can see that we got a table called sam now i'll i'll try to drop the user called sam again it won't work so drop user sam why it won't work because there are first he is connected so because he is connected okay so you cannot drop a user so let's let me show this particular message you cannot drop a user that is currently connected so you cannot drop a user that is currently connected so let me exit from that particular uh, i if if the user is not there you can kill it you know alter session session so i okay now i will try to drop the user sam it won't work again why there is a object so you, see this time we got a different message use cascade option so what we will do you know instead of doing that let's go back to the sam and we will say okay so okay so no i gave a wrong password so yeah so let me clear this okay so post cls and what i'll do i will say uh drop table sam so i'm going to drop that particular table the table is dropped now what we will do is we will try to drop the user sam and this time is going to work you, you know why because there are no objects so you we can either 
So, you, okay, so this time it again failed because he's still connected. So, let me exit from that particular session. And this time, when I try to drop the user SAM, it's going to work. We are not going to get any error. And why is that? Because first, user is not connected. Second, there are no objects. So, we don't have to specify the cascade option. So, when do we specify the cascade option? So, to drop the user, if there are no objects, we can say drop user, username, which is SAM. Okay, this will work, will work, but provided no objects. If there are objects with the user, then what you need to do, you will say drop user SAM cascade. Now, remember one thing, the user should not be connected. When you are trying to drop the user, it should not be connected. So how, what will you do? You will say alter system uh, kill session. You will find the user and you will kill the session and you will give this SID comma serial name number. You will give comma slash serial number. Just give me a minute. So you can see that user first we will terminate the session alter system system kill session SID comma serial slash will kill the session and then once we kill the session we can you, we can drop the user based on whether we want to have whether there are objects so you will say drop user username okay whatever user you want to kill and if you if that particular user has got the option object we will say cascade now how do we find out this SID and serial number Remember that is a view called V dollar session. So do a select on that particular view. Find out what are the sessions with the user called Sam. Okay, from that V dollar session, and then you can get. So we learned, we learned, we learned how to also create a user, how to drop a user, how to kill the session of the user. All good. Now I'm going to go back to the the last topic that I wanted to cover, and that is the backup and recovery. So, you know, the backup and recovery, there are multiple ways there are, there is a something called user managed backup. User managed backup is a backup that is taken without our man and you will physically copy the files. You can physically copy the files or you will copy the entire OS operating system itself. Okay. So this is something that you will be taking the backup without using the R man. Then there is a concept called cold backup and hot backup. Okay. So cold backup means Okay, cold backup means a backup which is taken when the database is shut down and hot backup means the database which is in the start, it is started. So the database is started, it is a hot backup. If it is online, if the database is up and running, it is hot backup. And if it is a cold backup, it is shut down. Then there is the online backup. Okay, and you know, so offline backup. So all of that. So let's, let's now, let's not talk about user managed backup because I do not personally recommend you. So we will use a utility called Armen. Okay, so you will using the RMAN, we will take a backup. Okay, RMAN. Okay, so to connect to the RMAN, you will say RMAN target and then slash. Now, slash means you are trying to connect to the database, which is the current uh, the database, which is set, you set using the aura env environment. So I will open a new session and I will set dot aura env to aura 19c and if i now if i sorry clear if i say our man targets dash i will be connected to a database called aura 19c you can see here connected to target database aura 19c okay with a dbid it gives a dbid data database identifier so this is the database identifier so aura 19c is the database that we got connected now this particular database we know that this particular database is currently up and running so how do i find out so select the name comma open mode from v dollar database you can see that this particular database is currently up and running it's in the read write mode so it's in the read write mode i'll put it here it's in the read write mode now if i try to take the backup of this particular database it will fail it will fail it won't work why is that why is that that particular this particular backup is going to fail and the reason of that is pretty simple. Okay. It is because this particular database is in the no archive log mode. And I'll come to that. What is the no archive log mode? And what is the archive log mode? I'll come to that. But think of that, that this particular database is in the no archive log mode, which means that you will not be able to take the backup of this particular database. So if I say backup database, if I say backup database, you can see cannot backup the database in no archive log mode, which means we cannot, since the database is in the no archive log mode, if the database is up and running, so I'll put this message here. 
So cannot back up the database in no archive log mode. So if the database is in no archive log mode and if the database is up and running, then you will not be able to take the backup. Now, which mode you should be in for you to take the backup in the no archive log mode and that should be the mount mode. So the database should be in the mount mode only when it is in the mount mode, when only it is in the mount mode, you can take the backup of your database. Okay. So what I'll, sh I'll show again, let me repeat this. So I'm going to close all these unwanted sessions. So give it a minute, give it a minute. Let, let two sessions be there. So let me clear this and I'll keep this and I'll do something. I'll, 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 I'll minimize this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll tell you how to connect to the first, you will set the aura ANV to whichever database you want to, uh, connect to you uh, in, in our main session, then you will say our main target slash. And you know, once you are done that our main target slash, you can find out that you are connected to a database called Aura 19C. So you are connected to, and if I now try to take the backup of this database, I, I showed it to you, but I'm going to show it again, it's going to fail. This backup is not going to work. This backup is not going to work. The reason for that is because the this particular database is in the no archive log mode. So I'll, so you can see backup of this particular database. You cannot take the backup of this database because this particular database is in the no archive log mode. Now, if you want to take the backup of this database, you have only one choice. You have to shut this database, shut down this particular database, start up this particular database in the mount mode. Then only you will be able to take the backup. So let's do that. So I'm going to exit, connect to this particular database using SQL plus SCTBA. Shut the immediate. I'm going to shut this particular database. Then once it is shut, I'm going to start up this particular database in the mount mode. So I'll say start up in the mount mode. So I've ran two commands simultaneously. So I first I ran the shut immediate, then I ran the startup immediate. So what it's going to do is going to shut the database. Then it's going to start up the database in the mount mode. Once the database is started in the mount mode, we will verify. We will verify that it is in the mount mode. We will connect to the RMAN session. We'll connect to the RMAN session and we will use we will try to see if we are able to take the backup okay so let's let's wait give it a minute okay so just give it a minute okay database mounted and now i'll run a query select name comma open mode and this time it is it should not be in the read write it should be in the mounted state why it is in the mounted state? Why it is not in the read write mode? Because we said startup mount. Okay. So now that it is in the startup mount, let's go back to the RMAN. Let's go back to the RMAN. So RMAN target. And now I will run the backup database. And this time the backup database command is going to work. It's going to work. And you can see starting backup. So we are no longer getting the error. We are getting the backup. And you can see the backup that completed so the backup of my database got finished the it back backed up everything and if you want to see the backup you will say list the backup list backup will tell you what are the backups so you can see on 7 april 20 2023 which is today you can see there is a full backup with all the data files so it's a full backup with all the data files you can see the command that i ran was list backup to see the backups okay so now is it a good, if your database, think of a, a bank, okay, which should be up and running 24 by sevens. Is it possible for you to shut down your database when it is in the mount mode, you cannot create tables and you cannot access particular, that particular, you know, literally. So let's think of this, you know, if I, if I now try to create a, so let's me, let me go back and say SQL plus SCS DBA and the database is in the mounted and I'll try to create a table, create table. So let's say, uh, uh, final and C1, this is not going to work actually. You know why? Because the database is not open. Okay. So you cannot take the, you cannot, if you, if the database is in the mount mode, that, that means that you cannot run a select query. You cannot create a table. So you cannot, you know, you cannot do most of the object functions. So is think of a scenario, you have a bank. Okay. And that particular bank needs the database, which should be up and running 24 by seven. Would you be able to, would you be able to, 
so you cannot do anything so what is the other option of taking the backup so you can convert your database to archive log well, if it is in the archive log then you can take the backup even if it is up and running okay if the database is up and running you will be still be able to take the backup and how do you convert the database into archive log mode you will set a parameter there will be two parameter one is recovery file desk size and recovery desk location you will set these two parameters and then once those two parameters are set then you will say alter database uh, alter database archive log and but to run this particular command your database should be in the mount mode so it should be in the mount mode only so let's do that so what i'm going to do now i'm going to i'm going to modify those two parameters so i'll say uh, what are those two parameters show parameters so look at those parameters show parameters recovery so let's take a look at and you can see there is a parameter called recovery file desk and recovery file desk size you need to first set this then you have to set this you cannot set it in the other way around so let's say set this particular parameter so alter system alter system the name of the parameter which is size and give it uh, 10 gb so 10 g and scope is equal to both so you are going to change it in the sp file uh the system okay so that's fine i think i that the particular database has to be in the open for it to happen so let me open that particular database and let me run this particular command now uh, alter system. oh okay no actually my mistake alter system where is the set command set okay so i made made a mistake with a set so now the system got altered now the another parameter the file dash this is the location of the this is the location where i want to set the this should be a directory which should be present so where is where is what i'm going to store my uh the uh, archive dash so dbd slash aura data i know that this particular directory exists if the, it does not exist create one so let's create this and i'm going to say scope is equal to both i'm going to do that so uh then again this particular command failed because i should have done something like this okay so the both parameters now what i'm going to do i'm going to shut this particular database again start up the database in the mount mode and i'm going to run a command called alter database archive log but before running that particular command let me cancel that particular command so i'm going to exit i do not know what exactly happened so let me connect uh, clear the screen sql plus as sys dba so sh shut abort it is not even started properly so shut abort startup mount so i'm going to start abort and i'm going to say startup mount so so that's two things done so i shut down the database mounted now what i can do so let me exit clear the screen connect to the database what i can say select name comma open mode it is the bound state and there is a parameter called log mode from v dollar database which will show that it, this particular database is in the no archive log mode now i set those two parameters so i'm going to say alter database archive log i'm going to say alter database archive log and now if i run this particular command you should see that my database is in the archive log there was another command that i should show you archive log list that is also another command that you can use which will tell you whether it is in the archive mode or not if i would have done this if i would have done this before so so now that we have converted the database into archive log mode now i'm going to open the database i'll say alter database open and now if i run this particular command it is in the complete read write state so you can see aura 19c it's in the read write state and it is in the archive log mode now i will do something i will go back to our main session and i will say backup database now when the database is in the read write mode and this time it is going to work this is called the hot backup hot our backup because the database is currently running and we were able to take the backup so to take the backup so let me go back so rman allows you to take the it allows you to take the cold backup 
okay the cold backup is possible it can it you can if, even if it is in archive log no archive log it is possible but cold backup is only possible in the mount mode now if the database is in the no archive log mode if it is in the no archive log mode you can only take the cold backup which is in the mount mode in the if the database is in the archive log mode you can take if you if if you place the database in the mount mode you can take the cold backup and if you if the database is running it is open in the read write mode you can still take the backup and that particular backup will be hot backup okay so okay so we learned and how do we take the backup to you can simply say backup database it will take the backup this is a, and if you want to see the backup you will say list the backup which will give you the backup okay the list of the backup and to connect to the rman first you will set the oracle environment so aura env you will set the environment so let's say uh let's say aura uh 19c then you will say rman target slash okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to i'm going to actually do something so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create a table so i'm going to create a table called employee okay i'm going to create a table called employee with the employee id of integer and employee name of character of 10 characters i'm going to create a table and then i'm going to insert a record insert into employee then i'm going to say values my first employee has joined with id of one and name of that employee is first m and i'm going to commit it and i'll verify that i have got one record in my table called employee okay so now what i'll do so now i got a one record so i'm going to now shut this particular database i'm going to shut this particular database and what i'm going to do is i'm going to physically remove the data file i'm going to corrupt this particular database i'm going to corrupt this particular database so i'm going to i'm going to show you how to recover the failure how to restore the database so let me let me let me let me uh, let's let's give it a minute so i'm going to shut this particular database so that the database is getting shut at this moment so what i'm going to do now so i'm going to exit and i'll go to that particular location i know this i should have shown you how to find it out and i'll show you in a minute so dbd slash aura data slash aura 19c look at the dbf file there is a dbf file called users i'm going to remove that particular file i'm going to physically remove that particular file that's gone okay ls minus l users 01.dbf is no longer there we crashed our database we literally crashed our database now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back as sql plus as sysdba and i'm going to start my database startup okay and the my database won't come online it will stay in the mount mode it won't go further it won't open and the reason of that is it's clearly identified that this particular file it cannot identify log this particular it cannot find this file we deleted it you know we did rm we got rid of that file now what we are going to do is we need to re so now i'll try to see which mode we are we will be in the mount mode so select a, uh, open mode from v dollar database we will be in the mount mode and if i try to do alter database open it won't work i cannot do anything i can only do sorry that is a alt spelling mistake alter database open and you can see it gives the same now there are two options we can drop that particular table space or drop make that file offline and then start it but that means we lost that particular data so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go back to the admin target okay i'm going to go back to the admin set target and i'm going to restore and recover that particular database so let's do rman target restore database okay then once that database is restored i'm going to recover the database then i'll try to open the database and then i'm going to now that worked fine now i'm going to say select open mode from v dollar database it's in the read write let's look at select star from employee and we got our employee record let's go exit and look at if that particular file is there which we deleted and that file is back again in the system 
from the backup image okay so the two commands that did the magic was restore database and the recover database so we learned how, we we dropped so we learned how to take the backup so the, to take the backup we used the command called backup database then we learned how to look at the backup using list backup then what we did we deleted a data file a data file okay and once we deleted the data file we try to start the database the database did not come online it was stuck in the mount mode okay we had other options but i'll not talk about that because this is a beginner training we had other options of solving that problem but i'll not talk about that solutions so the database was stuck in the mount mode so what i did i tried to do alter database open again that failed because that it could not find that particular file so i went to the rman i went to the rman and i said i said restore database which brought that particular file back recover database which did the point in time recovery and then i said alter database open which opened the database so this was the how you will do the restore of your database now that we learned how to take the backup how to take the how to do the restore i'm going to talk about a concept and which i should have done in the beginning is what is the oracle database made of oracle database there is an instance the instance is made of two things one is the background processes and then there is a memory there is a memory okay instance memory the instance memory is made of sga pga etc i'll not cover all of this topic but the database itself is made of data files the database itself is made of the data files so that is important you need to understand not only the data file there is a concept there is another type of file which is control file then there is a another file which is a parameter file and then there is a password file and then there is a redo logs so these are the types of different types of files which are present in the oracle database data files control file parameter file password file redo log file all of these files are important if you if you do not have the parameter file if you do not have the parameter file the database will not even start password file you can recreate it okay if you if you don't have the control file again the database will not open if you don't have the data file probably the database might open okay but let's think that if if that then there are data that that there is a concept called table spaces then there is a there are a table space called system sysox which are import mandatory table spaces you if those are not present you cannot bring up the database so you need to have those database table spaces present so literally there are there are things there are there are this is all physical so parameter file password file control file data file this is a physical structure so this is a physical structure then there is a redo logs which is the log files and then there is a temporary uh, table space temporary table space and then there is a undo table space so these are all the so temporary table space will have a temp file and undo table space will have a data file so these are the these are all the all the structures so now let's go back and understand so we talked about startup stage okay so the database when it starts it goes through a phases so first phase is the no mount stage then the mount stage then the open stage when it is in the no mount state it reads the parameter file and what are the parameter file sp file or p file okay it reads the parameter file sp file or the p file when it is in the mount when it goes in the mount state it goes in the control file if once it reads the control file it will go to the open and at this moment it opens all the data files now think of this if the parameter file is not there it will not it will st stuck in the no mode if the parameter file is there but the control file is not there it will st get stuck in the mount mode if the control file is there but the data file is not there it will get stuck in the mount mode it won't open okay so okay so i'll i'll sh and how to find okay so now the parameter file i talked about sp file and p file so there are two files anyone is fine sp file is better p file is uh, not better but you can use any okay both are perfectly fine but sp file is always better and i'll come to that point point 
why sp file is better why p file is not better so the p file is a text based file you can modify that particular file using the vi or any uh, nano tool or whatever tool you got you can edit that particular file but if you if, if you edit that particular file the changes that you do to the parameters that go, won't get affected unless you restart your instance sp file allows you there are some parameters which you can modify directly you know in uh, using scope is equal to both and that gets or modified automatically in that particular sp file where is the location of this p file and sp file this particular location of this will be oracle home slash dbs so there will be a directory called dbs under the oracle home so let me go to that particular directory so let me exit and here let me go to that particular directory so i am under oracle home dbs and you should be able to see here there is a sp file here and there is a init aura file and there is a sp file where is the sp file you can see there is a sp file aura 19 c dot aura file okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to get rid of this particular file i'm going to get rid of this particular file so i'm okay and uh, before doing that let's shut down the database so i'm going to shut down the database okay and i've shut down the database so i'm going to shut down the database okay so let it let let it get shut down once it is shut down i'm going to get rid of this particular file sp file okay sp file aura 19c where is that particular file that is in the oracle home dbs location so i'm going to get rid of that particular file let's see what exactly happens so uh, just give it a minute i'm waiting for this to happen so i'm going to say instead of deleting i don't need that particular file so you know i'm going to move that particular file to say backup so i'm renaming that particular file now if i run ls minus l you can see sp file aura 19c is not there now it's going to start up the database i'm going to start up the database let's see what exactly happened and you can see it cannot it cannot find the init file okay so why did it complain on the see we renamed sp file but it is complaining that it init file cannot be found you know it's so funny it's so funny rename renaming sp file gives a different message why is that happened because the oracle no oracle will read this particular files in this particular order so first it will try to read the sp file if the sp file with the sid dot aura so it, it needs to be in this particular format so sp file with the sid sid is aura 19c if it cannot find the S sp file then it will try to read the init uh, with the sid dot aura okay so first it tries to find this particular file since it this particular file was not there so sorry there is a spelling mistake here init dot aura init sid dot aura so it since this particular file was not there it tried to find this particular file and since this particular file was also not there also not there then that is why it complained that you know that particular file is not there so it stopped so at this moment you can see if we are not even able to get our database to the mounted state so let's go back now and rename that particular file back to its own name its correct name okay and now what we are going to do is we are going to do the startup and so startup uh, will say startup but this time what we will do you know we will get rid of the control file okay we will get rid of the control file let's get rid of the control file so let's go to the location where the control file is there so how do you find out the location of the control file i'll come to that particular point so let's i know it so you know but i'll tell you how how to find out so let's go to that location aura data slash aura 19c and under that there is a two control file control one and i'm going to rename all of this so let's say move control file one to uh, old and move control file to old now when we run when we run the startup command we will no longer get this error you know init file cannot found could not open parameter will not get we will get another error and it will say you know control file could not be found okay see error in identifying control file okay so it is trying to find the control file now where is this control file and what it is looking for so you can look for a parameter called show parameter control file so you can look for a parameter called show parameter control file and you can see that there is a there is a there are this and let me go to that particular directory and look for control one control 01.ctl control 02.ctl so i'm going to open another session and let's go to that particular location and let's find out if there is a control and you can see that is it's looking for control 01.ctl it's looking for control 02.ctl and those two files are not there so now the database is stuck in the no mount mode it will not go to the mount mode like i'll try to do that so if i now say select a, select a open mode 
from v dollar database let's see where it is stuck and you can see database not mounted okay so now i'll say select uh, let's describe that is the view called v dollar instance let's see what that v dollar instance is showing so uh, v dollar instance and the status let's take a look at select the status from v dollar instance and it will be in the no mount state so sorry that is there is a mistake selector this you can say it is started okay so you know the the but the database is not mounted so now what we are going to do is we are trying to we'll say alter database mount okay we know that it is not mounted so you can see database not mounted so we'll say alter database mount it's not going to work because the control files are not there so now what i'm going to do i'm going to put those control files back to original name okay so i'm going to put them to original name let's take this i'm going to do this that's done now i'll go and say alter database mount but before doing that i'm going to get rid of i'm going to get rid of this dbf file system.dbf file i'm going to get rid of this particular file okay so then i will say alter database mount this is going to work okay because control file is there once the database is mounted okay i'll check what is the status so let's run select open so it will be in the mounted and now if i try to alter database open it's not going to work the system data file cannot be found okay system data file cannot be found so the system that so the system is very important this is called a system table space and that particular data file cannot be found so you cannot you cannot open that particular database itself so now i'm going to go back and i'm going to rename that particular file and once i rename that particular file let's put that particular file back go back here and now i'll say alter database open and now my database is completely open so if i run select open mode from v dollar database it's in the read write mode and that's all good so now let's go back to our document and understand this carefully so in the first it go when the database starts it goes through no mount mount and open when it is in the no mount it will try to read a parameter file a parameter file can be an sp file and p file and what are these two files i'll come to that just give it a minute so what are these two files it is a parameter files sp file and p file then once the once the sp file and p file is located and once it has read these two files then it's going to try to read the control file once it reads the control file the database is going to go into mount mode once the control file is read then the final stage is, is going to open the database to open the database all the data files should be there if the data files are not there the open is going to fail so no mount mount open okay so now we talked about sp file and p file so what are these two files? the database needs any of this file either sp file or either p file it doesn't need a both the files it needs only one of this particular file the difference between p file is a p file is a text based file sp file is a binary file you cannot edit sp file you cannot edit sp file you can you can you can edit p file manually to edit the sp file you have to use alter system command okay so how to edit uh, how to edit a p file to edit a p file open it's a text based file it's a text based file you open the file in vi or nano editor whatever editor you use you just edit the parameter and then save the file to edit the sp file it's a binary file it's not a text file you you have to use alter system command you have to use alter system command to edit the sp file now the advantage of system sp file is like whatever parameters that can be changed immediately that gets changed immediately you don't need to restart your database but if you use sp file you have to restart the database now database is not going to read both it's going to read either sp file or p file so first it will try to read the sp file if you cannot find sp file it will try to read the p file and show parameter sp file will show whether the database was opened using the p file or sp file so show parameter sp file will show that whether it was so you can see if it is it is not blank if it is not blank then it was opened using this particular sp file all good all good so we so now it's time now it's time to actually now it's time to actually understand uh, understand how to create a p file so to create a p file from sp file 
okay so to create a p file from sp file so what sequence it, uh, it reads it first reads sp file and then it reads the p file so now what i'm going to do so I'm, I'm going to do one more thing so i'm going to shut this particular database i'm going to shut this particular database and i'm going to go back and i'm going to rename this particular i'll, I'll go to that location where is that location oracle home slash dbs so i'm going to go that to that location and under that particular location under that particular location you will find a file called sp file okay i'm going to move that particular file okay and i'm going to go to backup and then i'm going to start the database i'm going to try to start up the database and the startup is not going to work because we know that it's tried to look at the p file we we already saw that but i wanted to show you this now what i'm going to do i'm going to i'm going to uh rename that particular file again so i'm going to exit out of this and rename that particular file back to its original name so let's uh, go to dot bkup and i'm going to go to that aura and i'm going to try to start the database this time the database will start okay this time the database will start and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an init file out of it and i'm going to get rid of sp file okay so create p file from sp file okay so now once this is done file created go back to this location and let's cl close this and if go back to this location and look for ls minus lrt in it uh, and you will be able to see that there is an init file with aura 19c so now i will get rid of this this file i'll get rid of this file sp file okay I'll, i'm going to delete this and then i'm going to say shutter immediate okay and i'm going to start and it's it's going to work it's going to work okay so the reason why it's going to work see previously when i renamed the sp file it did not work but now i i deleted that particular file and i'm telling you that it's going to work why because there is an init file so it needs either init file either sp file first it will try to read the sp file if it cannot find sp file it will try to read the p file if it finds p file you are you, you will be able to open okay so let's let it let's see you can see i've shut down the database so let it get shut down once it is shut down i'm going to start the database so let it give it a minute and if it is not happening let's uh, let's kill the process so let's find out ps minus ef i do not know where it is stuck so let's i'm going to kill okay so it's done so you know so i'm database closed database dismounted then instance will shut down so database shut down let's wait for it to shut down give it a minute so oracle instance shut down so now it's going to start okay now it's going to start because i already said startup and it's see you can you, it's starting okay and now if i run show parameter sp file it will be blank okay it will be blank so that particular parameter this particular value will be blank see here okay it's blank why is this blank because now that particular database got opened using the init file okay it tried it opened using init file so when it opens using init file and you can see that init file is a text-based file i'm talking about it again and again but i've never showed you so this particular file is an init file so vi this particular file is a normal text file you can see right on your screen it's a normal text file the init file this is the normal you can change this particular file but if i show you now what i'll do is like from this i'll try to create so how to create a sp file we remember we deleted that particular file so now if i run ls minus lrt sp file uh, for aura 19c dot aura so you can see that there is no such file okay so because why is that no such file so let me run this particular command sp file aura 19c is not there because we deleted so how to create sp file we'll say create sp file from p file so we'll do that so that's done now if i run this you can see sp file is back again and now if i try to do the vi to this particular file you will see it's a binary file we can still read something but it's a it's, it has got this this uh characters so you cannot edit this particular file and do not try to edit this particular file manually so to edit the parameter in the sp file you will say alter system set and you will change the parameter name whatever parameter you want to change you can change it and then you, you can specify the scope so there is a scope so this is how you change the sp file so now we we'll, we learned about sp file p file so there are two files p file and sp file it reads sp file is a binary file p file is a text file it will try to read the sp file first if sp file is not there it will read the p file p file uh, is a text based file you can edit it sp file is a binary file you should not edit it you should edit it using the alter system if you change the parameter using sp file you don't need to restart okay you can you do you, some parameters you might need to restart but most there are some parameters which you cannot but p file you have to always restart okay the next file is the control file we are we talked about the control file 
So what is the control file? Control file stores the information about the database, such as the SID, the backup information, uh, the data file information. So it is the control file is nothing but uh, nothing but information about the data information about the database okay without this particular file the oracle doesn't know where is the where is the where is the system data file it doesn't know the the, the data file it does it doesn't know anything where is it it's okay so it doesn't know about what are the backups that has taken it doesn't know about those backups literally it doesn't know okay so without control file you cannot go to the open state so first the sp file then the control file then the data files okay so without control file so how to find out the location of the control file to find out the location of the control file you will you can either say show parameter control you can say show parameter control and you will find so let me i made a mistake here control c let me exit and op clear the screen and you know open okay so let me, let's not do that so let's uh, system clear so not system clear what am i doing post clear okay and show parameter control you can use show parameter control and you can see that i got two locate two files one is control zero one or what i can do is like that is a view called v dollar control file so you, that is a view called v dollar control file i can run a sorry it's a disk v dollar control file so you can see that there is a name so let's take a look at select name from v dollar control file and you should be able to see there are two control files in our system these control files are the information about the database these stores the information if the control files are missing your database will not go into the same and this control file will exactly be the same they will be exact copy so why we are having two control files so if one of the control file gets corrupted you can still start your database by using this second control file so that also means that you should keep these control files on a different disk in my case i kept it on the same location this is not correct you should keep them on a different disk drive so if you are keeping this one control file on a c drive then you should keep the another control file on a d drive so and the c drive and d drive should be separate hard drive so this should be separate disk so remember that this concept is called multiplexing of control file this concept is called multiplexing of control file now how to do that multiplexing it's a slightly higher concept i do not want to touch that concept or you know uh because it's it's going to it's going to make your uh, this particular video really long so this is the this is the control file and next comes the data file so i talked about the data file but what is important is the data file is a physical file there is a there is a concept called table space there is a concept called table spaces and the data files are part of the table space so when you create a table space a table space can have one or more multiple data files it can have multiple data files and for temporary table space it is called temp file okay for temporary table space it is called it is called uh, temporary so let's take a look at let's take a look at a view called disk dba underscore table spaces okay let's take a look at this particular view and you can see that we will have a uh, something called table space name so let's uh, select the table space name from dba underscore table spaces and we should be able to see okay so there are uh, there is a spelling mistake okay there is a spelling mistake in the select so let's correct that particular thing and i'm going to so you can see we got system csox undo temp users these are the table spaces and each of this particular table space can have one or more of the data file for temp it is temp file for others it is a temp data file so how to find the data file for a user's table space how to find a data uh, data file for user's table space so to do that you will say selector so that is selector d select okay so we will first there is a view called describe dba data underscore files take a look at this particular view so name is selector file name com from dba underscore data underscore files where table space name is equal to table space name is equal to users so now okay i always make mistake with this say select so sorry about that and you can see that the for users the data file is users01.dbf now 
tomorrow for some reason this particular data file got full okay or what happened this particular data file is on the mount point called dvd that particular mount point got full so what you need to do is you need to add a data file in a different location how to do that so you will say alter table space alter table space users so name of the table space which is users add data file then you will give the name of the data file so let's try to give a data, try to create a data file in dbe uh, and give the name as users 02.dbf and give some size so let's say size of 1 gb and you can see if this particular command runs fine okay then let's take a take a look at this output and now we got two of the data files okay so we added and this particular data file is in a different location so it's not necessary that we have to create the data file in the same location we can create the data. so if this particular mount point got full this particular mount point linux mount point or let's say if this was on a windows c drive if this particular was on a c drive and c drive is getting full and you cannot extend the c drive you can create a data file on so now this particular so the data so the table space so you can have a table space and a table space has got a data files and those data files okay those you can have multiple data files so how do you so now if i want to create a new table space if i say create table space test and if i if i want to you know so you i'll say test data file i'll give the name of the data file okay and i'll say db and so db slash test 01.dbf uh, and size of 1 gb so i'm going to create this particular table space now if i look at this particular table space called test so if i want to know what is the file name for this particular so if i go to that and if i type test and you can see db.test01 now if i go to that particular location physically so let me clear this and if i go to that particular location and ls minus l you can see that there is a file called test1.01.dbf this particular file belongs to this particular table space called test now if i want to create another table file for this particular how do i do that so the command is simple so i'll run alter table space test then i will say add data file and i'll give the name of so test02.dbf and then i'll say size of let's say i can add of 2 gb not necessary that i have to add of the same size okay so i'm going to say size of 2 gb now if i go ls minus l you can see that is a test one uh, and there is a test two and this si file size is 1 gb this file size is of 2 gb so now we added a two so there are other other options while we create so we can say alt we can when we create a data file we can say alter uh the uh, data uh, and we can resize the data alter table space add data file and give the name of the data file so name of the data file and then what we can do we can specify the size and then then we can say size 1 gb then we can say auto extend on and we can say max size to 2 gb so what it will do initial size initial size of 1 gb so i'll say initial size of 1 gb and auto extend on and max size so there are other options of if you want to re resize the data file you can resize the data file if you want to drop the data file you can drop the data file so if i want to if i want to this particular drop this particular table space i can say drop table space test including contains and data file okay so uh there is a there is a spelling mistake uh, there is a give me a minute so i will say drop table space test including contents and data files i'll say this and you this it is going to if you go here it's going to drop the if you see the test 01 and test 02 both got dropped because we said drop the table space along with the contain and the data file so you know how to drop so if you if you don't want it to if you just wanted to drop the content you can say drop the contents and you can say drop test but if you will not be able to drop the test if there is contents in it so this is how you create a table space to create a table space you will say create table space to drop a table space you will say drop table space table space is a logical grouping 
actual grouping is is the data files so that is the data files and there are there are important mandatory table spaces which is system sysox which should be online and then there are users temp undo for each and every function if we can add one or more data files to this data files are physical the 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 table spaces are logical i think i think this is all that i wanted to cover in today's video i hope you learned something new this i just whatever was coming to my mind i thought of speaking on that topic you know it's it's not well organized there is no ppt that i referred it's a, i was typing in a notepad and i was speaking so the topics might be here and there they may not be in the proper sequence but this is then this particular tutorial was for a complete beginner who would have no idea of how the oracle works and they want to start their career with the oracle environment that's for whom i designed this and i thought you know i actually wanted to record a a, a video for oracle database with the proper documentation but you know it was taking time and you know i thought let me first record something like this a rough video and at a later point in time if i find time i'll come up with a nice presentation nice word document nice ppt and i will put all of this into that and i will talk about it i hope this particular video was useful i hope this particular topic is useful this particular video is definitely going to help you this is there is a lot watch this particular video if you don't understand this first time watch it again watch it again watch it again see what i'm trying to say see what i'm trying to do the way i'm doing it it was all basic it was all for a beginner and if you had no idea of how the oracle works and what is you know i try to cover a topic a basic topic so that you can start with your oracle career thank you for watching do subscribe to my channel and see you in next tutorial. Till then, bye-bye.